Today we're going to be looking at finding slopes and graphing lines. It's N2-1. This is your low grade makeup assignment. So if you look at the formula on the front page, it's the formula for slope. M is my slope. And the formula is M equals Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So let's work a few examples. Problem number one. It says we're going to find the slope of the line containing the given points. So the points that I have on problem number one, negative 6, 2, and 4, 8. So here I want you to label your x1 and y1, your x2 and your y2. Okay, follow those steps and this should be fairly easy. So if I look at problem number one, I should have 8 minus 2 divided by 4 minus a negative 6. Remember, minus a negative means that I'm actually adding. It changes to a plus sign, so look at that plus sign in pink. Once I subtract those, I get 6 divided by 10, and then I'm going to reduce. Once I reduce, I should get 3 fifths. Okay, let's look at problem number 2. Again, using the x1, y1, x2, and y2, I should have written negative 3 minus a negative 3 divided by negative 1 minus 2. Remember again, minus a negative becomes a plus. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and negative 1 minus 2 is a negative 3. If I have 0 in the numerator, then my answer for my slope is just 0. And finally, let's look at problem 3. I should have 6 minus a negative 3. And remember, again, that's going to make it a plus, so 6 plus 3 is 9. And then I have 2 minus 2, which is 0. If I have a 0 in the denominator, my slope is what's called undefined. Okay, so now let's look at the next few sections of notes. Looking at these four boxes, I want you to copy down what the definition of all four are. If I have a positive slope, my graph's going to go up when I'm reading left to right. For a negative slope, when I read left to right, it's going to go down. If I have a zero slope, that means that my line is horizontal. So an example would be something like y equals 2. And then the undefined slope is going to be a vertical line, which goes up and down. And so an example of that would be x equals 2. Now let's look at the next two definitions. If I have parallel lines, they're going to have slopes that are the same. So when I solve the equation, if my slopes match, and they're identical, then I have parallel lines. If I look at the next one, if I have perpendicular lines, then my slopes are what's called opposite reciprocal. An opposite reciprocal means two things. Write this down. Number one, I change the sign of the slope. And number two, a reciprocal means my numerator and my denominator will switch. So let's look at some examples. Question number four says, determine whether each of the following lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So number four, I have two lines. It gives me two coordinate points, so I'm going to find the slope of line one as well as line two, and then I'm going to compare. So I when I find the slope for line one, remember it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I should have two minus one divided by seven minus four, and that's going to give me one-third for line number one. If I look at line number two, I'd have one minus a negative two. Remember, that means I'm adding. And I have zero minus one. So that gives me a negative three over one. So since this is the opposite reciprocal, my signs have changed and my fraction has flipped, my answer for this one is going to be perpendicular. So now let's look at a few more examples. You guys flip the page and let's look at questions five and six. Looking at question five for number line one and two, I have the two coordinate points. We're going to use the exact same formula for slope that we did on question number four. So here, I have negative 13 minus one divided by negative four minus three. When I get my slope, my answer is two for line one. And then following the same steps, my answer for line two is 13, seven. So here, neither one of them matches. It's not the same, and it's not the opposite reciprocal, so my answer is neither. If I look at number six, and I use the slope formula, I end up with both lines having a slope of three. Remember, if my lines have the same slope, 
then my answer will be parallel. Okay, so now look at the next section. We're talking about two formulas. Formulas for a line. You're familiar with slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b, where m is my slope, and what's b? That's right, my y-intercept. And then standard form, which is ax plus by is equal to c. Now, when you see standard form, this is what we have to do. We have to solve for y. So again, solving those equations are going to help you with solving for slope. So let's look at a few examples. Looking at problem number seven, it says we're going to graph the lines using the slope-intercept method. So first, I need to come up with what m and b stand for. My m is my slope, so looking at my equation, my slope is negative one-half. b is my y-intercept, so it's a positive two. So the way I write it as a coordinate is 0, 2. So I'm going to go over to my graph, and I'm going to plot the point 0, 2. So that means I'm going to go up two units, and I'm going to put a dot right there. Now in order to graph the rest of the equation, I have to use my slope. Okay, so if I have a negative 1 half, that means I'm going to go up one unit and to the left two units because it is a negative. If I keep following that pattern, I go up one to the left two, up one to the left two, I have enough points that I can graph this equation. Okay, so let's look at number eight. Number eight is actually in standard form. Before I can actually answer what my slope and my y-intercept are, I have to solve the equation. So I want you to go ahead and solve the equation for y. So once you solve for y, you should have the equation y equals 3 fourths x plus 6. So my slope is 3 fourths. My y-intercept is a positive 6, so I write the coordinate point as 0, 6. And then I go to my graph. I'm going to plot the point 0, 6. And then from there, I'm going to go up 3 and to the right 4. Up 3 and to the right 4 again. Now, if you notice when I go up 3 and to the right 4, I almost end up off my graph. So the other way you can do it to connect more dots is do down 3 and to the left 4. Down 3 and to the left 4 again. If I go down and to the left, I have a negative and another negative. So what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. So that's where I get that equation from. So let's look at the last two examples. Flip the page, and I'm going to work problem 9 and 10 for you. My next two problems tell me I'm going to graph the line using the intercept method. So what you're supposed to do in order to find the x and the y intercept, you are going to take a 0 and plug it in for y when I want to find the x intercept, and you're going to plug in a 0 where the x is when I want to find my y intercept. So let's look at the example. Here are my first steps. To find the x intercept, I rewrite the equation. And instead of using the y variable, I'm going to plug in a 0. So I have 3x plus 5 times 0 equals 15. So I end up with 3x equals 15. And when I divide, I get x equals 5. I will write my coordinate point as 5 comma 0. Same thing with the y-intercept. When I'm finding a y-intercept, I plug in a 0 where the x variable is. So here I have 3 times 0 plus 5y equals 15. So 5y equals 15, I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and y is 3. So that coordinate point is 0, 3. Now in order to graph it, I'm going to plot both points. So for my first one, I'm going to go to the right, 5, and I'm going to put a dot. And for the next point, I'm going to go up 3 and put a dot. And all I have to do is connect those two points, and I have my graph. So let's look at number 10. Number 10 I want you guys to try. It's 2x, or excuse me, it's 12x plus 8y equals 16. Following those exact same steps on number 9, I want you to answer number 10. Your answer should be as follows. My x-intercept should be 4 thirds comma 0, and my y-intercept should be 0, 2. If you have trouble with number 10, let me know, and I will see where you made the mistake. You guys should use these 10 examples to answer the next two pages. Remember, this is a low makeup grade. You do not have to do this, but if you do, it'll make up two of your low daily assignments. Good luck.